The WWE United Kingdom Championship Tournament was a two-day tournament that aired on January 14th to January 15th of 2017. Um, I did not make a react a thoughts video on the announcement of it because I was because since it was just a two-day event, I knew oh yeah, well I get to well I get to talk about that. I was surprised that this tournament was happening because one, we were all hearing that oh it's gonna be. It's going to be, uh, let's see, the women's division going to get a big tournament. The women's wrestlers are going to get a big tournament. And a lot of women wrestlers were coming back or joining the WWE to compete in this tournament. That's what we were all hearing. And then all of a sudden we get this tournament and it's a two-day tournament. Ugh, that, that's surprising. Well, it's into the hell of Triple H, so I'll give it a shot. And boy, was it awesome. Like, my God, that, that show was awesome. Like, I was... And here's the thing. I have never heard of any of these wrestlers. Probably because I'm from the U.S. And I didn't really look up stuff that goes on in the U.K. wrestling independent scene. But I ha I didn't even hear that... Um, what's his face? Uh, Jordan Devlin, I think. Yeah, Jordan Devlin was, well, Finn Balor's protege. So when I heard that, I was like, oh, he's going to win the tournament. Like, he, he's, or at least make it to the finals. No, he made it to the quarterfinals against Tyler Bay. I was surprised by that. I was suspecting that Jordan Devlin would win the match, would either make it to the finals or make it to, or win the tournament altogether. And that surprised me. And also, I have been hearing reports that they were told, uh, okay, can you hold back? Like, can you not give it your all, even though this is probably a one-off deal, even though probably not? But, yeah, can you hold back, which I thought was absolutely stupid. Like, I get that, that during the match between Danny Burch and Do Jordan Devlin, it, uh, Danny Burch was bleeding in the back of his head, so I can understand that. But there was no other injuries reported, and that was mostly because they held back. But all the matches were great, good from good to great. And I always now wonder what would have been if they were not allowed to hold, if they were allowed to not hold back, and allowed to give it their all. So when I heard this announcement and saw saw this stuff and the championship, like. Once again, no creativity to the to the new titles. I like granted the UK Championship center p p plate actually looks interesting, but ultimately it's just a carbon copy of the WWE Championship, of the Women's Championship, of the well Universal Championship. Basically, let's not put anything innovative and just slap a logo of the Insignia, the coat of arms of the United Kingdom. Oh, and uh, add the WWE logo to it. There, that completely makes it a unique title that stands on its own. I'm like, we could put an effort and make it unique, but uh, fuck that. So, yeah, that was my only big complaint. And I was surprised that there was this one particular wrestler that surprised me. Tyler Bate. He was 19 years old. I was, when I first saw him, I was thinking, oh, he looks like he's in his early 20s. He's not even 20 yet. He He's 19 years old. That I'm 21, and I'm making YouTube videos for fun. Like, I could try and make this a career, but I'm not established enough yet. But, uh, yeah, he's wrestling on, the grand, on a big stage, and and he's only 19 years old. And here's the thing. He won the tournament. Wow. That That's actually surprising. Like, I thought the one guy... I thought, like, he was not even on my consideration for who was going to win this tournament. Like, when I saw Jordan Devlin, I was like, oh, he's going to win this tournament. When I saw Pete Dunne was getting momentum, oh, he's going to win this tournament. Um, And Pete Dunne was also one of my favorites. Like, he was just... Like, he looked generic, but his attitude was certainly different. And I think, you know, I wouldn't have been surprised if people were, like, mad at 
that don't like Pete Dunne because of his last name, sounding very familiar to a certain Dunne who likes to say no to anything that Triple H creates and therefore will bash anything that is created, and also punish all the guys and gals who are affiliated with Triple H in every single way possible, instead of, you know, doing a good fucking job at his, you know, job. Also, we got Neville and Tommy Ann to compete in a non tournament match, which was awesome. And Tommy Ann is supposed to de- make his debut in the NXT division and have a different name. So, this must be like a going away moment for Tommy Ann's name. But Neville managed to defeat him, and it was a good match. And, yeah, and Michael Cole... Okay, let's talk about the announcers. Nigel McGuinness and Michael Cole. They were awesome. I can't believe I'm saying that. But Michael Cole actually was passable in this. I think I think Vince not screaming in his ear since Triple H is telling him the orders and whatnot certainly helps. I mean, like, granted, Triple H has... I'm pretty sure Triple H, we don't know how Triple H operates. Like, uh, he could operate like Paul Heyman, where basically Paul Heyman basically screamed in in their ears, except he was thinking with logic, whereas Vince was thinking with stupidity and senileism. But, I don't know. Um, but anyways, yeah, Tyler Bates, I mean, Bates won this tournament, and I was surprised. Like, I was thinking I it was going to be Jordan Devlin or P. Dunn. Like, it was going to be one of those two. And I loved how they acknowledged the other independent wrestling promotions, like Progress Wrestling. Like, it really gave a flesh-out feeling to the fact that there are more promotions. Like, and I know this is going to be off-topic, but... It sort of relates to the WWE Network. There are rumors speculating that the ICW promotion is going to be airing on the WWE Network, which will be a freaking huge surprise for me. I might even make a video about that one day when they eventually do show the show, if they do it. But yeah, there were supposed to be several other wrestlers on the show, like Tiger Alley. Rigo Ryan, Jack Stars, and Chris Tyler, they were supposed to compete in the tournament, but they were cut out for some reason. But they were scheduled to be backups if any injuries f- fell to the final 16. So, yeah, I don't know what happened to that. And, however, Jordan Devlin, I gotta be honest, he is way too much like Finn Balor. He wears the jacket, the black jacket. He has the face of Finn Balor. Not to help that Finn Balor is actually there. And I'm thinking like, oh dear, this is going to be problematic. Um, if this was on the main... I mean, like, the hardcore fans know who Jordan Devlin is. Not me, but I know who... Jo- but, like, they know who Jordan Devlin is. So, they would cheer for who he is. If this was on the main roster show... The casual fans who have never seen these shows, most likely, would say, oh, that's Finn Balor's son, or Finn Balor Jr., or Finn Balor II. They would just chant Finn Balor because they know he looks like Finn Balor, he has the attitude of Finn Balor. Well, you can't really tell that because he would have to be in Bullet Club, and and the casual fans don't know what Bullet Club is. Heck, I'm pretty sure they were confused what John Cena was going with with the whole bullet puns. So, yeah, um, Jordan Devlin, like, he has to change up a lot about himself or else people are just going to think, oh, he's Finn Balor, oh, he's just Finn Balor's protege instead of coming up with his own unique identity. You know, something that Roman Reigns seriously needs instead of barring all the shield aesthetics. Like, he could keep the armor, the security armor, but, like, because that actually fits him. But the music and believe that, like, yeah, that needs to be questioned. Like, he could just say when he turn if he turns heel, is saying, I'm Roman Reigns, I'm better than you. Because on the grounds of, well, Roman Reigns has been given the Superman booking, so let's just do that. But I'm talking about nonsense. So, yeah, Triple H, Finn Balor, Finley, and William Regal all showed up for this event. And provide and gave Tyler Bate the belt, 
which was awesome. Like, I was thinking, like, since we were seeing Finn Balor and William Regal, I was like, where's Finley? I want to see Finley on here. Like, I get Triple H is supposed to be here because he's the host of the show and the creator, but I want to see Finley. Like, he made a major impact in the wrestling scene. So, yeah. I, my wish was granted when Tyler Bates won because Finley showed up to help with these ceremonies. So I was like, they listen to us. <gasps> Triple H listens to us. Whereas Vince McMahon just gives us the middle finger too many times nowadays. But moving on, um, this isn't the same as the Cruiserweight division if you haven't seen this tournament. Like, I didn't see it live. I saw it after the shows because my internet was acting up. But if you were thinking it's going to be like the Cruiserweight division, it's not. It's a more grappler-based style. Whereas the Cruiserweight was all about Japanese, Mexican, high technical matches. This is more grappler-based. And I was glad to see it. I was glad to have watched it. In its entirety, probably was easier because it's two not because it's just two episodes where I missed several Cruiserweight Classic episodes and I, it was becoming a drag to watch all of them at once. So yeah, but I did stay tuned for the final episode of the Cruiserweight Classic. But um, yeah, like I said, the commentary was great. Michael Cole was all right for once. Nigel McGuinness was great. And he's a former Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor guy. So I wonder how many buttons that press for Kevin Dunn. But I can't wait what's going to happen next with these tournaments. Like, are they going to do the women's tournament this year? Are they bringing back the Cruiserweight Classic? And also, I heard that the United Kingdom Championship tournament is to pave way for a UK-based show for WWE. Which, okay. I get because they have a title and now they need and they have a division for it. But at the same time, like, they're kind of risking, they're further showing the oversaturation problem. Because now not only will we have Monday Night Raw, a pay, okay, a first a pay-per-view, Monday Night Raw, uh, SmackDown Live, 205 Live, NXT, and if you don't count the rest of the, in the other wrestling promotions, like TNA, their pay-per-views, Lucha Underground, Ring of Honor. And now you have this UK-based show. And potentially ICW having a show on the WWE Network. That makes a total of eight different shows in one week. When they do pay-per-view season. And if you count TNA's pay-per-views that happen every couple of months, besides the one-night onlys, that equals nine shows in one week. That is bonkers. Like, they're gonna have to make some alterations. They have to, they have to change things up a bit. Like, oh, and also main event, so that makes ten shows. But really, who cares about WWE main event? So yeah. 10 shows in one week. And if you cut out the pay-per-views, then it's 7 shows or 8. So, yeah. Call me crazy if you think if this is an oversaturation. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my one major concern with the expansion of the UK scene on the WWE's part. So, yeah. So everyone, this was Neo Reality Entertainment. If you like, comment, subscribe, and donate, stay tuned for more.